and we're live. Yay! I am so honored, you guys, to have Jose Ruiz on with me today to ask a few questions and get to know him a little bit better. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about him just in case you don't already know him. He's the international best-selling author of The Fifth Agreement. He's a Toltec master of transformation and a modern day shaman who has dedicated his life and truly that he, that's not just reading off of that. He has dedicated his life <laughs> to sharing the wisdom of the Toltec through his lectures, his books, and through basically being a guide around the world to these absolutely incredible locations. And I think you have one coming up, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm so honored. And so tell us just a little bit about yourself. Oh, thank you, Sister Jamie. First of all, I'm so grateful to be here with everybody and with you. Thank you for the invitation. And, you know, I, I'm so grateful to, to life, to be alive. And I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share the teachings from my family that were taught onto me. But not only that, I use other techniques in teachings because I know that we all work for the same boss. And to bring positivity into this world is bringing positivity to our homes, to our families, and especially to ourselves. So that's the flag, you know, wherever life puts, I am ready to serve. And there's nothing better to do. So all, all these beautiful opportunities to write books and share messages, I, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to share the art from the heart. And we're so grateful that you do because truly you are a master. All right. So if you've seen any of the other interviews that I've done, we are all about getting to know our speakers and artists. So I'm so excited because Jose, you have not heard my questions, have you? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I like, okay, so I like, this is I like off the cuff. This is genuine from the hard answers. And I can't wait to hear them. <laughs> so, first of all, how would your friends describe you? My friends describe me as an artist without control. <laughs> oh, fun. It's, it's because I, I, I like to create a lot. I, even creating music, creating poem, creating everything is just like an open channel to create. So, that's why they describe me like an, like an artist. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So no specific medium. You just love it all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love it all. Awesome. What book changed your life? Oh, there are so, so, so many books that out there that changed my life. But uh, one thing that really profound me was a book by Christopher Reeves, And Nothing is Impossible. And and it's not the whole book, but it was just the story where he come from, when he got paralyzed, lost everything, hated God, and then came to love God again. I love all that transformation, and he started helping others. But the quote of the book that really stands to me, because it's the first page that I opened that got me to read the book, is, um, I only got one religion, and one religion only. If I do good, I feel good, and if I do bad, I feel bad. And that's my religion. And from this point on, I can see we can make everything easy, or we can make it as complicated as we want. So that book really helped me in my life. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful book. book. <laughs> it's a beautiful book. He's a, he's a beautiful soul. What charitable causes fill you up? Because I know you, I know you're doing lots of stuff right now. So, <laughs> yes, uh, a, a, a lot of inspiration that comes to me is music, and and it's beautiful because when I hear music, it's like my brain stops and I sing the lyrics that gives me the opportunity to overlook what kind of life I'm living in the moment. So when I'm going into music, all of a sudden I get epiphanies and then I turn the music off and I write them down. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so inspired. So it just, it, does it help with the flow of information that comes to you? Yes, because it helps me connect to the, the bottom, uh, the bottom message. And you know, sometimes when we write, you know, we get the message, but then we lose ourselves editing and we lose the magic and then we, we stop the flow. And that's one thing that I love to do. I, I get the message, I flow it all, and then after after world, I, I I review it and and then I, and, and then learn from myself too. <laughs> for sure, for sure, I get that. <laughs> Yay! Okay, what's next? What's next? How do you spend alone time? How do I spend alone time? Is with my puppy. <laughs> me and my puppy, he helps me to take care of him, so I, I am more centered and grounded. But my, my, my alone time, either I create or I go to the flea markets. I used to love to go to flea markets before the COVID-19. But uh, that's what I love to do in, uh, in my alone time, create, be with my puppy, 
see movies and uh, hear audio books and, and create or go to my studio and just doodle with the guitar and office and I'm making a song. <laughs> nice, nice. And when you're at the, when you're at the flea markets, are there, do you, are you looking for something in particular? Are you looking for something kind of that jumps out at you? Yes, always looking for vinyl records. <laughs> always looking for sometimes parents when the kids move out, they 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 didn't clean the room, so they leave the vinyl record collection. So I'm a I'm a vinyl junkie, so I, I look for that. But other than that, I love to see people's dreams, because I saw people how they detach from things. Because when you see some people, not the regular vendors, but new people that come, they just want to get rid of their stuff, and uh, and I can see how we can hold on to stuff and how we have so much value. So sometimes I see people. A stuff from the 70s that is not valuable anymore. They have enough emotional attachment that they raise the price and don't let it go. And there's other people who are ready to let go of everything. And that's what teach me in the Swami, when you let go of something, something comes in. And, and, and out of that, there's something I, I'm in my mind while working on. One of the dreams that I always had, but I always tour. But this quarantine, I, I really am going for it. I want to open a little rock and roll spiritual shop, you know? where I can just have my little communion with people coming out and put, so that's one thing I, I love about the flea market. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yes, that's a, that's a brilliant way to put it because people are, boy, do we have trouble with our attachments, huh? Yes, yes, I mean, <laughs> sometimes uh, it's, they hold us behind, you know, we want to move, but there's so many stuff that they don't move us or even memories, you know, we don't hold memories and, and this is when I, I guess like five days ago, I, I, I read online um, this beautiful quote of a master from India. I, I forgot his name because uh, he was just scrolling fast, but what the message that he said, it was so beautiful, it says, repeat after me, nothing is mine. Nothing is mine, repeat after me. And when I heard that message, I go, this is so beautiful because at the end of the day, we are attached to our body, we are attached to everything. And this is how we don't see our body separate, like a, like a little animal, like a, like a living nature, because that's what the body it is. And uh, this body is not ours, it's, us, it's part of mother nature. So when I heard that quote, it opened my vibration to say, you know, it's time to take care of what is, what is life, you know, because that's the most precious thing. And the most precious thing is to let go of every material thing that stops us, even the thoughts that we have of tomorrow never comes because we think that tomorrow will be happy if I have this, but it's not true. It's the, the action that makes us to feel this. So that's what I love about that person saying non-attachments and nothing is mine. <laughs> Nothing is mine. I love it. It's, it's brilliant. And it's so true. All right. Do you have any fun or silly socks? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I, what image is on your favorite pair? Well, it's, it's, it's hard because one of my favorite des designers is Betsy Johnson. And I so love her socks. They're like the most comfiest socks, you know, yes. I can wear, I can wear a robe, I can wear a tunic and can wear my shamanic you know, priest, priest gear outfit that I go into ceremony, but I always have those socks because they're warm and fuzzy. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> All right. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Mm, the best compliment that I ever received is, the, is my grandmother and my father, father holding my hand and, and, and saying to you, we're, we're proud of you, son, to leave your, uh, your old dream behind. And in that moment, it was 2002, so in 2003, and I never even dreamed about teaching the Totec tradition like the way I was in that time and beginning to do so. But what really touched my heart was I was holding my grandmother and my father's hand at the same time. And so it was true generation. So that is the biggest compliment that I've ever had. And uh, because it touched my heart, it gave me permission to be me. And that's what I, I, I love it. <laughs> that's powerful, that's powerful. All right, last but not least, what excites you most? Mm. Well, fashion and music. Fashion and music excite me. They just, and, and I'm talking not about just rock and roll fashion. I'm talking about all the fashion in the world. It's like one beautiful uh, expression. One of my sisters, Kara, said to me once, we never know how Divine Mother is going to dress today. Is she going to dress like Kwan Gien, like a Mother Mary, like, uh, you, you know, and, and from this point on, is ourself, you know, how is mother gonna dress today? Even if you're male, you know, you carry divine mother and, and the music, the place, the soundtrack and the outfit is just like inspiring because I just love that world. <laughs> That's an awesome answer. I, I love that answer. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you so much for being here. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, how do they do that, my friend? 
Well, uh, I, I am in uh, my father's website, Miguel Ruiz, for everything that we're doing, participating. But my, my art that I love to share with the community is, is Instagram. On um, Every Monday, I go live. Uh, I, I just went live a few moments ago, and you can catch my, my repeat Mondays. I did the whole years of Mondays, so I have like 30 or 40 different videos. But that's why you can get in touch with me, because I just open my heart, and whatever's in my heart, I receive. And uh, yeah, and then in the in the in the MiguelRiz.com, there's more information about what the family does. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored. I'm privileged, and I can't wait to see you again soon, my friend. Oh, same way, sister. Thank you again awesome. for inviting me. Thank you, social media. I'll of course add attachments and and handles and whatnot to the uh, to the comments and. Until then, 